Hello, and welcome to Donaldson Clean Solutions webinar, The Challenges of Diesel in Cold Weather. I am Jim Peterson, Sales Manager for Donaldson's Clean Solutions Group. We all know that cold weather can be tough on diesel equipment. Even relatively mild, at least by Minnesota standards, temperatures of 40 degrees Fahrenheit will start to impact the performance of diesel. Filters plug, equipment won't start, productivity is impacted. Cold weather causes a variety of headaches. Thank you for taking the time to join us for this webinar on the challenges of diesel in cold weather. We hope that you come away with a better understanding of these challenges, some of the pros and the cons of the different approaches in dealing with them, and most importantly, that Donaldson is your resource for all diesel fuel issues. As we get started, it's important to review, at least briefly, several of the important concepts as they relate to filtration. Every filtration system shares three basic and vital characteristics. The first is efficiency. Efficiency defines how well the filter works. How well does it take dirt out of the air, out of the fuel, out of the lubricant it's supposed to protect? Is that filter 90% efficient or 99% efficient? Efficiency is really the most important characteristic of any filtration system. The second characteristic is capacity. How well, how, how long does that filter last? How much dirt can it hold before it gets plugged up? Another way to look at capacity is filter life. And finally, there's pressure drop. Pressure drop is the resistance to flow that the filter introduces to the system. How much more difficult does it make it for the air or the fluid to get through the system when that filter's there? The reason we put these into a triangle, efficiency, capacity, and pressure drop, is that they pull against each other. Take efficiency, for example. As I make a filter more efficient, or take it to the extreme, for example, a wall, which would be a very efficient filter, my pressure drop is going to go up. Or, if I want to make a filter last longer, uh, more capacity, making the filter less efficient is a good way to do that. On the other hand, as efficiency goes up, pressure drop will increase, and capacity decreases. So again, efficiency, capacity, and pressure drop pull against each other, and finding that right balance is important to any filtration system. It's worth mentioning why the need for f better fuel filtration has been increasing over the last few years. The advent of high-pressure common rail engines designed to meet uh, stringent emission standards has changed the game regarding fuel cleanliness. As you can see in this quote here from Mr. Douglas of Caterpillar, very clean fuel is vital to modern engines. Higher injector pressures, upwards of 45,000 PSI, mean tighter clearances inside the fuel systems. To keep these systems running as designed, fuel just needs to be a lot cleaner than in the past. And not just cleaner. The size of the particles that we want to capture has changed as well. Only about 10 years ago, particles in the 7 to 10 micron range were really about as small as filters need to worry about capturing. Anything smaller than that would go through the combustion process. However, with the high-pressure common rail engines, we are concerned with particles as small as 2 or 3 microns, and we need to keep as many of these particles out of the engine system as we can. This chart helps show how filter efficiency requirements have evolved. The blue line on there, listed as a 25 micron filter, is the typical level of efficiency found on many filters on bulk storage tanks today. At 20 microns, this filter has an efficiency of around 96%. In other words, it stops 96% of the particles that are 20 microns in size. And as the particle uh, sizes get smaller, the efficiency goes down, down to about 40% efficient at 3 micron. Now with traditional fuel injectors and traditional fuel uh, filtration on board an engine, we typically again want to capture particles in the 7 to 10 and larger range. And this green line shows the filtration of efficiency of a 7 micron filter. Again, at about 10 microns, we're going to be 99, 99.9% .9 efficient, very efficient. But as the particles get smaller, that efficiency goes down quite a bit. And at 3, per, three microns, we're only 82% efficient. For filtration on a high-pressure common rail engine, we want to stop particles at 2 to 3 microns in size. And this need, means the filters need to be extremely efficient, even at these smallest particles. As you can see on the red line, even at 3 microns, we're 99.9% .9 efficient. We got to stop just about everything with these filters today. Now, as cold weather begins to affect fuel, this higher efficiency can become both a hindrance as well as a help. Fuel gelling is going to plug up any filter it comes across. As you can see here, all the way from 2 up to 20 microns in size and larger, when you've got a gelling problem in your fuel, any filter will capture that and plug up quickly. 
Many diesel users take advantage of cold flow improver in order to minimize the effects of gelling. And most of these products work very well and are compatible with the filters on most equipment. However, on the newest equipment with highly efficient fuel filtration, the cold flow improver actually plugs up the filter as well. And we'll dig into this a bit more in a moment, but the challenge for equipment users is that everything is working exactly as intended, yet problems persist. The first problem that we want to tackle is fuel gelling. Gelling occurs when fuel reaches its cloud point, and the cloud point will vary for different fuels. For high biofuels, gelling can begin to occur as high as 40 degrees Fahrenheit. For number two diesel with lo a lower bio content, fuels will have a lower cloud point, and with number one diesel, the cloud point will be lower yet. The reason for this difference has to do with the chemical makeup of the fuel itself. Number two diesel is a mixture of hydrocarbon chains ranging in length from 11 carbons to 20 carbons long, and you can see that depicted in this, uh, in this image here. Now number one diesel is made up of shorter carbon chains. Longer chain hydrocarbons create wax solids at higher ambient temperatures than short chains in the fuel. Another way to say this is that number one diesel has a lower cloud point than number two diesel. It's why it's often used in cold weather environments. It's very popular to uh, try to help vehicles run in colder weather. Now the fuel's cloud point is where the longest chain hydrocarbons in the fuel reach saturation and begin to transform into solid paraffinic waxes. This becomes a problem as untreated diesel forms sheet wax crystals that quickly grow to 100 microns or larger. And you can see some of these sheet wax crystals in this cool sanding electron microscope photo we, we have here. These sheets are large enough to be caught on any filter and they, as they grow in number they will click, quickly plug up the filter so no fuel gelled or otherwise can pass. This slide makes the practical difference between number one and number two diesel clear. We have three sample bottles of typical fuel here, uh, the, the sample on the left being number one off-road, the sample in the middle being number two off-road diesel, and the third bottle being number two on-road diesel. And as you can see at six degrees Fahrenheit, all three samples are above their cloud point and uh, ready for use. Now as the temperature drops, you'll notice the number two diesels are now below their cloud point at negative nine degrees Fahrenheit, and there's obvious clouding in both sample bottles. Remember in winter, a 17 degree swing is not that significant and can easily happen as daytime turns to night. And as the fuel in these, uh, fuel in, like this in tanks gets colder, it will gel up both in the bulk storage tank and on equipment as well. Fuel problems can plug up filters in a real hurry. And these filters here are examples of just how nasty diesel fuel can be in the wrong conditions. From a filtration standpoint, these are the easy ones. Any filter will capture this kind of problem. In order to combat the gelling that occurs, fuel additives called cold flow improvers are used. The main component of cold flow improver is ethylene vinyl acetate or EVA, and its function is to modify wax crystallization, the gelling, at the fuel's cloud point temperature. The EVA is present in the fuel at a concentration where it becomes oversaturated just above the fuel's natural cloud point. It forms small EVA crystals that act as sites for paraffinic wax crystal growth. The fuel wax crystals grow as needle-like structures around the central EVA crystal. EVA also coats the outside of the crystal, limiting growth. And this produces dendritic crystal structures, kind of like spiny sea urchins that you see here in the red circles, and it limits them to the range of 10 to 20 microns. It's important to remember that not all fuel additives are created equal. A main component of many of the higher end cold flow improvers are wax anti-settling agents, or WASAs. WASAs are a series of amine compounds that are added to coat the wax crystal structure with a charged molecule, preventing agglomeration and settling. They also further limit the size of the crystals formed to about 1 to 5 microns. So with untreated diesel, we can get wax sheets growing in excess of 100 microns. When we use cold flow improver with EVA, we limit that growth from 10 to 20 microns. And when we add the WASAs, we limit growth further from 1 to 5 microns. Now in a perfect world, cold flow improver solution will be matched to each batch of fuel coming out of the refinery. And this is often the case, but unfortunately, due to variances in the uh, fuel's cloud points, there will be times when the additive is not totally in sync with the fuel. The intention of the EVA and the WASA is to improve cold temperature fuel properties, like the cold filter plugging point and cold flow filterability. It is important to remember, cold flow improver does not prevent gelling or change the temperature at which gelling begins. 
It's just designed to make it more manageable. As mentioned in the previous slide, the high quality cold flow improvers do a great job at limiting the size of the gelling crystals formed at one to five microns. And here's the challenge. Modern filters are designed to capture particles of this size. Therefore, often in winter, you can see rapid filter plugging even when everything is working exactly as designed. We see that illustrated here. As the fuel gets colder, it begins to gel. Cold flow improver with the Wausau modifies the growth of the wax crystals in sizes from 1 to 5 microns, exactly as intended, rather than the 10 to 20 microns without the Wausau or 100 microns or more with the wax sheets. Unfortunately, this can cause highly efficient filters to plug up as high pressure common rail engines need such clean fuel and those 1 to 5 micron particles tend to plug up those filters. Often, a filter that was rapidly plugged with cold flow improver will not have any visible signs of plugging. If you look at this filter here, the media is very pink and it looks like it would have when it came out of the factory. But actually, this filter was plugged rapidly with cold flow improver. And in fact, this is often the first clue as to the likely reason for the plugging. Filters that are plugged with dirt or other hard contaminant will have obvious signs such as black or other discolored filter media. Now, if we look at this filter and zoom in to two, uh, 2,500 times magnification, we can see that this filter is starting to plug up very quickly due to cold flow improver. The sites between the, in, in the red circles is the space where the fuel can still flow, but they're getting smaller and smaller. And after only 30 minutes, you can see that the entire filter is completely blocked off with cold flow improver. There's no way for the fuel to get through the filter media and the equipment will stop running. So is there no hope? Are you destined to spend all winter stuck with frozen fuel and plug filters? Of course, the good news is that there is hope and there are steps that can be taken to minimize the effects of cold weather on diesel fuel. Not all vehicles are affected by cold weather problems in the same way. In many systems, as the fuel starts to warm up, the process reverses. As the temperatures go below cloud point, the fuel will still gel up. However, as the fuel warms on board the engine, the gelling is reversed and the fuel begins to flow normally, even through high efficiency filters. Besides waiting for the fuel to simply warm up, a common approach to dealing with cold weather diesel issues is to apply filter and filters with a lower efficiency. The thought process being that if we allow more of the problem through the affected filters, they will last longer. And this is the case. As we talked about before, less efficient filters will last longer. However, this is the passing the problem downstream. Essentially, the problem moves, in the case of bulk tank filters, onto the equipment itself, and in the case of on-engine fuel filters, into critical components. Donaldson never recommends putting less efficient filtration on the engine. There are cases where it is worth considering putting less efficient filtration on the bulk storage tanks. This needs to be done with some forethought, however. Remember, in addition to cold weather filter issues, the high efficiency filters on the bulk storage tank are used to keep good old fashioned contamination out of the equipment. It's always recommended to discuss the pros and cons of this with Donaldson, as well as the OE vehicle manufacturer. The most effective place to keep fuel problems, be they cold weather issues or basic contamination control out of your equipment is through highly efficient filtration at the bulk storage tank. But this is not a panacea. Filters at the bulk storage tank can create a choke point. For some end users, rapid filter plugging at the bulk storage tank is more of a pain than dealing with the issues on board the equipment. Again, this is a good question to consider prior to installing high efficiency filtration at your bulk storage tank. Where do you want to feel the pain? Is it better when filter issues occur to feel the pain at the bulk storage tank? Or is it better to let the problem get into the equipment and deal with it as it occurs there? There's no right answer. It's going to be different for every user, but it's something to consider. Where is the best place to handle these problems? Always follow manufacturer specifications for proper blending of cold weather additives. Too often, people assume that if one dose is good, another dose will be even better. So as the temperature continues to drop, more additive goes in the tank. This can actually be very counterproductive plugging up fa filters even faster than before, as well as causing additional engine problems. The more cold flow improver added over the recommended dosage, the higher the temperatures at which solids will form plugging the filter. 
Cold flow improver may also have been added to your fuel at some point in the refining or distribution process. It's best to talk with your fuel supplier to determine if additional cold flow improver is needed. If you do choose to add cold flow improver, it normally needs to be added to warm fuel, well above the cloud point. It is a fact that number one diesel, with its shorter chain hydrocarbons and lower cloud point, will likely perform better in colder weather than number two diesel. Many effective strategies for dealing with cold weather problems call for increasing the percentage of number one diesel in the fuel. It is especially important in newer equipment where the highest quality cold flow improvers can contribute to the plugging of high efficiency filters. However, number one diesel is considerably more expensive than number two diesel. In addition, number one has less heat content than number two, which can have an impact on fuel economy. These factors must be considered as well. Whether you're thinking of using a less efficient filter, increasing the percentage of number one versus number two, or modifying your additive doses, it's important to get expert advice. Donaldson Company can provide the filtration expertise, but it's also important to get your fuel and additive suppliers involved as well. We need to all work together to make sure that no matter what the weather, no matter how cold it gets, you will keep your equipment running with clean fuel and you achieve more. As we finish up our webinar, we invite you to check out our web-based resource, MyCleanDiesel.com. No matter what the weather, it's a great place to keep up to date on fuel issues and best practices, and you can learn how to meet and exceed service intervals, reduce unplanned downtime, prevent rapid filter plugging, and optimize fuel efficiency, power, and emissions. Please check out MyCleanDiesel.com and connect with us there. Thank you for joining us for our webinar on the challenges of diesel in cold temperatures. I hope you found it interesting and informative and plan on joining us for our next diesel webinar scheduled for January. You will receive an invitation early in 2015. Again, my name is Jim Peterson and I can be reached at 952-887-3311 or via email at james.peterson at donaldson.com. Thank you for your time and attention and we look forward to speaking with you soon.